the images that we have just looked at that come from Byzantine mosaic artists tend to be associated with uh, courtly patrons who paid for those mosaics in Hagia Sophia, for example. So those mosaics, which are usually quite large, tend to be on the remote side and tend to be formal. The people, however, really needed something different. And there is, for the people, a popular form of Byzantine art, which is referred to as the icon. An icon is an image, and in fact, that's exactly what it means in Greek, icon equals image. So it means it's a picture or a depiction of something, but it's very special. It's not like anything else that we have looked at this semester. An icon actually is believed to have special power. It can work miracles, it can defend you from evil, and it can act as a mediator. It connects you directly to the individual depicted in the iconic portrait or portrayal. In this case, what we're looking at is figure 931. It's the Vladimir Madonna. It is located in Russia today, and it depicts an image of Mary and Jesus. It would be believed that through this image you could could connect with them directly to ask for their help in times of need. Icons consequently were small in size and the reason for that is they might need to be taken from place to place. So they're small, they're portable, and this particular icon in fact was actually carried through the streets when a city it was in was under threat of outside attack. So these things get heavily used. Sometimes they might be placed by the bedside of a sick parent or perhaps by the bedside of someone giving birth. They might be in a, a church as well. In either case, they would probably be placed next to candles that were burning and consequently we would get a buildup of smoke on the surface. The point being, these are heavily used. These are works of art for the people that are used by the people, and as a result of that, they tend to become worn. The only part of this that we actually think is original is the face of Mary, and the rest of it we do believe was overpainted. It was overpainted because it had to be, because it had become so damaged through heavy use over the centuries. We think this does come late 11th century, maybe early 12th century as an image. These objects are treated with extreme devotion and reverence because they do allow you to connect so closely to, in this case, Mary or Jesus. There are others that depict the saints that might depict Jesus alone or Mary alone. In each case, you would have the opportunity to connect with the uh, person uh, depicted in the icon, and it was believed that these icons had power through that person to work miracles, so that these were treated, and still are, treated with extraordinary reverence. Uh, even today, the last time I was in Greece, I went to a religious service, and I saw people coming in and kissing the icons in the church. Uh, glass today, we're placing glass over the icons to protect them, but in, back in the day, that was not in the, ca the case, and as you can see, a lot of damage has occurred because of use. So we think these images are known to have spiritual power. Okay, where'd the spiritual power come from? Well, we, we believe by tradition that icons are exact representations, copies, exact copies of original images that were given to human beings by God, or in this case, perhaps by Mary and Jesus. These original images had power because they're a divine gift to us, and therefore copies made from these would also hold on to that power. Because these are copies, for centuries and centuries, the pose and the style tends to remain the same and become very formalized. In this particular case, we have a gold background, and that begins to make this look very, very otherworldly. We also have a depiction of Mary, let's go over here, where her eyebrow continues a long line 
down a very long, elegant, and delicate nose. She has a tiny little mouth, and she tilts her head towards her son, Jesus. This is described in our textbook as an image of compassion or as a depiction of the Madonna of compassion. What they're really saying is Mary is expressing not only love for her son, but also sorrow because she knows what's going to happen to her son. So the tilt of her head and the sadness on her face indicates her awareness that he will grow up, but grow up only to be crucified. Uh, this is a common device that artists use, and it helps to complete the story of Jesus' mission, born as a child intended to grow to manhood and ultimately to be crucified to save humankind. The light that reflects off the surface of this is also incredibly abstract. It has nothing to do with what we would see in the real world. And it tends to be conveyed in lines, and often in lines that are angular. You can see that kind of sunburst activity going on in the body of the Christ child, and you can see it in the ribbon decoration around uh, the border of the veil that Mary is wearing on her head. This figure is very clearly removed from our ordinary world. It's not just the gold background and the abstraction, but the figure also seems to be a very flat silhouette, almost as if it's a cutout with no real sense of space, so that it's been created as a very otherworldly religious image. It again gains its power from its predecessor, the images that came before it, and those had authority because it was believed believed they were given to humans directly from God. It's exactly because of the power that these icons appeared to have that there was a period of iconoclasm in the Byzantine Empire. Laws were actually proposed, put forward by the emperor, to ban the use of images because it was believed that people were actually praying to the image itself rather than to the divine being the image represented. However, after a time, the use of icons was again allowed, and a flurry of created images of creations of icons reemerged. The Vladimir Madonna is one of those, reminding us of the power of pictures, and in this case of the power of an iconic image to actually suggest comfort to the person viewing it. I'd like you to think about all of this for our weekly discussion board topic, which will deal with images of the divine and if and when we should actually display them.